time has moved forward and I haven't had time to deal with this for, for a while uh, but uh, now I've got some time back in my hands and we've got ourselves a DC junction box. Is that not a thing but a beauty? Ah, look at that. Uh, so this is just a, a second hand of course, a metal box uh, that's anchored to the wall with some uh, rather sturdy uh, concrete mount. So this is not going anywhere. And it, mounted inside it we have two reasonably sized uh, circuit breakers. Uh, these are uh, 160 amp uh, breakers, uh, 600 volts DC rated. So these are way overkill for this system. We could do with some that are like that big, but I had these at hand and I don't have any better use for them. So why not? And all this mess over here is just a temporary uh, a maintenance charger where I've got my old uh, TriStar charge control just hanging there to keep the batteries topped off since uh, I've got a couple of solar panels mod as well. And so, uh, yeah, there's really nothing too fancy going on. The wiring is dead simple as it stands right now. And we just have the incoming here, uh, battery one plus and minus, battery two plus and minus, going through the breakers and into these uh, 95 square mil uh, terminals, uh, whether it's arranged positive, positive, negative, negative. So that's why we have a bit of crisscrossing off there just to make it easier to write the wires out since we can take positive, positive and negative, negative right next to each other and making it a bit easier. Uh, I've gone the route of having four output blocks so I can run completely uh, independent and uh, redundant everything all the way to the inverter. So the plan is to keep running this is 50 square mil wiring everything all the battery wiring is a 50 square mil. I still have some of it left, uh, so I'm hoping to be have enough left to run uh, two times 50 square mil uh, to the inverter. That's probably going to go over on this wall here, like there-ish, so you don't slam the door in it, uh, and just kind of uh, wire it up with uh, four wires uh, going over there uh, that way. We, we just have redundant everything. We can even remove like everything on one side without affecting the other side. It enables us to easily, if we have an issue with this breaker, we can keep our uh, this breaker on and uh, do work on this side or this off reasonably easily since we can disconnect uh, these two terminal blocks here uh, well, no, these guys, that, to completely isolate everything here, uh, giving us uh, a, a clean workspace, a sterile workspace. Uh, so this break is uh, taken apart right now because uh, for a previous project I'd used it in, I'd remove these help contactors. These are just two micro switches that are activated by uh, the internal mechanisms of uh, the breaker. And uh, this switch is the on off switch uh, that's just uh, going on the mechanism that's uh, uh, connected to this lever arm. So if the brake is off uh, this switch lets me know and this one is for the overcurrent trip uh, mechanism which is in here, this little arm going there. So if it trips like so, uh, this switch is going to let me know that there's been a fault. So we've got a fault and on off status which is good. I've got to uh, three lights on here, so I'm thinking I'm going to wire them up to like battery one on, battery two on, and a fault, something like that, with like a simple diode. Or these are little old LED lights, but pretty okay. Um, don't think I need to modify them, so for adding different resistors to make them uh, 48 volt compatible. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the, if you're curious, these are the uh, spark arresters for the breaker. So these go on top of the terminals like so ish and these help uh, dissipate any arcing uh, that might happen uh, when you know 600 volts DC is disconnected. And you can see we have a ridiculously large isolation gap there. Uh, so these are properly serious breakers. Properly serious. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure. I have three large uh, switches on the front as well. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to use them for. This one's, uh, I believe, 80 amps and these two are 25 amps. Uh, 
I don't want any uh, free face or two vertebrates in this cabinet. This is going to be purely the DC cabinet, but uh, if we have some auxiliary 48 volt stuff, we might uh, put them to use. They are uh, easily accessible. Uh, it would be nice to have these uh, acting as a remote uh, disconnect for the uh, breakers, but sadly, uh, I actually have one of the uh, I'll have both the remote uh, disconnect boxes for these, uh, but that's a bit of an issue using them. Uh, this is the remote disconnect Ooh! remote actuator for these breakers, and as you can see, it's bloody humongous. It is as big, if not bigger, than the breaker itself, and it just won't fit inside. Uh, so, yeah, we can't. Uh, uh, can't use those, sadly. Would be nice to just have front panel access, but you're gonna have to uh, open it up to turn everything off. Uh, so, yeah, that's the status right now. Uh, I'm starting to look at uh, uh, prices for services and solar panels. I've got a few leads, uh, but I am going to need some uh, professional help doing the uh, uh, mains voltage stuff since that actually needs to be properly approved uh, by the electric company before you're allowed to use it for safety concerns. They don't want to have anyone accidentally feeding out power when there's a power outage to, to the grid, uh, so they really want to keep an eye on that. And since I want to be able to feed power out as well, if needed, if, if, if the batteries go bad or something, uh, uh, I want it properly inspected, properly done, all right, and I'm going to have to run a shit ton of wire, fat wire, all the way in the ceiling, through all these rooms, following these wires roughly, and up to the main electric central over there. So that's going to be a lovely project. I'm going to have to get some cable lights or something. It uh, doesn't help if we have super low ceilings down here, so we don't want it dangling down too far. Uh, but yeah, that's just a mechanical work that I can do myself as long as I have help, uh, help with actually wiring it up properly with someone who's got proper proper papers for doing that sort of thing. I'm also looking at solutions for covering these batteries up. I don't want to have the terminals exposed, so I'm thinking I'm going to get some like clear acrylic or something and build a bit of a wooden frame around them, just have clear tops so you can visibly inspect them without getting it killed if you put some metal on there and I'm actually not sure if the invert I'm going to go for uh, has uh, uh, battery isolation. I strongly doubt that since that would mean it has to have a transformer inside and uh, why would you have a transformer inside? That's just big expensive heavy stuff. Uh, it's much easier to just do it with chokes and uh, not have the batteries uh, isolated so I'm expecting these to be live at mains voltage. Once everything's wired up, you know, it's, you know, safety touch 48 volt system. Uh, when it's setting, it's not going to be that way when it's uh, wired up to the inverter. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a minor issue, minor mechanical work. And if you're curious, I actually have moved the UPS over there as well. But all my six volt Sony shines are wired up. These are all, these are bloody miracle batteries. Uh, they are from 2007 except for that one, which is from 2009. Uh, and uh, these have been absolutely abused. They've been let to discharge to a roughly 50% state of charge. I, I, I'm a bad boy, I'm a, I'm a bad dog. I, I have not taken care of my children. Uh, but these are all still almost uh, new. Uh, we have, I think this is the worst one, at uh, 284 amp hours. And uh, that one's still 308. I don't know, 276 amp hours over in the corner. But yeah, they're, they're, they're still pretty much in spec despite being old and abused. The two worst ones of, of them all are here 251 and uh, 240. So these guys got a bad deal. They're starting to drift out of, out of spec, but uh, it doesn't really matter, you know. We've got. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so uh, when we're all done having a new system wired up, these are probably going to go in the barn with the old solar controller, with the old 
the solar panels to just like have the barn be off grid because the, the 230 volt wire going to it is actually broken so I have no power at all there right now so these guys might might serve that quite well for for the foreseeable future yeah oh. so satisfying to finally have the batteries wired up Beautiful.